So this is a Williams Bad Cats pinball. Uh, it was manufactured in 1989. It's a System 11 board set. <clears throat> this was the game that got me into pinball. When my wife and I were dating in the 90s, uh, we played this game at a resort that we had stayed at. And I liked pinball then, but I really liked this game when we played it. And I pulled out a, one of my business cards and I wrote down the name of it. Um, this was probably about 1995, 1996 that we played one on location. Anyway, um, when we got our house in, it was either 99 or 2000, I started looking for one and I came to find out that uh, there's kind of a limited production run on the game. It was, there were only about 2,500 of them made. Um, but once we got a house, I started looking for one, and it wasn't really easy to find back then, and they're really hard to find now. Um, but I did see a few of them, and I passed on a few of them. One of the things about Bad Cats is the orange color. Now, now my understanding is that there, there were two flavors of the cabinet manufactured by Williams. One of them had, um painted or silk screened artwork which is I believe what I have and I think that the other one had decals and one I, I think it was the decaled one if I'm right about that uh, that would fade really bad and the orange would turn yellow so when you see these things out in the wild sometimes it's hard to tell uh, what the original color was but it it's orange like this and it, it I waited I passed on a few of them back then and I waited until I found one with the uh, orange cabinet uh, my cabinet is original this is not it has not been redecaled it's not perfect but it's mm, I think it's really nice I I waited for one with a decent cabinet it does have um, holes drilled for at one point it must have had a lock bar going across that coin door um, but I've had this game since about 2000 um, and everything on it is original even the plastics and there are no broken plastics so I when I got the game it had some broken plastics but I bought a populated playfield off of eBay in the early 2000s and was able to replace the plastics that I had like my slingshots were chipped one of them was chipped I can't remember which one but I was able to replace that uh, and the, the so the slingshots usually you'll see they're broken that's true on most games this plastic here over the shooter lane uh, was is a real common plastic to break and that's tough because even if you buy the replacement plastics, there is a uh, shield here right under this flasher that's riveted onto the blue plastic. So it's a little bit of work to replace that. You have to uh, rivet that shield on. Uh, but way back, when, like soon after I got the game, I made a protector for it and I slid it under there just to keep the that original plastic from breaking. Um, it's also real common for this drop target plastic to be broken. Mine was, a whole chunk of it was broken off. And fortunately this one has a, you can barely see it as a crack in it, but it's intact. Um, I do have a replacement plastic set. They came out with a set, but um, I have not, opened the bag yet to use any of them. Um, it's funny too that, you know, I started, soon after I got the game, I started looking into um, online resources for help because I, I had to fix a couple things on the game. Um, and I live in the Chicago area and I went to Pinball Expo and I actually met a couple of the designers of the game. I met Python Angelo. He's a 
great guy. He's passed away, unfortunately. But uh, what a character he was. And I met Barry Orsler. I hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly. He's, um, he's a <laughs> and I came to find out that they both, like Python, I talked to him several times, and he was not a fan of Bad Cats. He, <laughs> He, I, if I remember right, he told me it was a filler game. Like it wasn't. He wasn't proud of it. He wasn't. He did the. He did all the artwork. And uh, I, it, there was some story about him doing it in like a day or some ridiculously short period of time. But he, he wasn't. He didn't have a lot of good things to say about the game. But it's funny over the years. Like when I got the game. Um, you could buy them for cheap, like 500, 700 bucks. Uh, I had this one shipped. It was purchased off of eBay, shipped from Pennsylvania. So I bought it sight unseen, only the pictures, um, which I will never do anymore. I mean, I had, I had a pretty good experience with this one. Um, just a couple things were broken and I was really happy with it, but uh, I, I don't think I would do it again. Anyway, I overpaid for it at the time. I paid like nine seventy five or nine seventy nine, something like that. Uh, and people used to scoff, like oh, it's too much. But I wanted this one because the cabinet was unfaded. Um, but now they've. It's funny. There's a following for the game. It's a pretty family friendly theme, uh, and a lot of people like cats. My wife loved the game. Um, it. There, there's a lot of great WPC titles, and if you meet a pinball enthusiast, Bad Cats will not generally be on the top of their, um, you know, most wanted list. But there are a lot of people that want them now. I was kind of surprised over the years. It's just climbed, and, and I'm, I guess I'm lucky that I got mine when I did. Um, I, and I just, there's a lot of videos online about the gameplay. Um, I'll probably flip this on and play it um, in the video, but I just I wanted to kind of do an overview of the assemblies on the game and what's unique about it. Um, I had the opportunity back in the early 2000s to buy extra parts and stuff off of eBay, so I hoarded some parts. I wanted to keep my game running through the years, and you know these things are getting older, and parts are not always easy to find. So the play field on Bad Cats, um, in fact, the play fields on all System 11 games, it's rare that you'll see an, an original play field in good shape. This one still has the factory mylar on it, and uh, it did its job. I mean, my play field's not perfect. It's never been touched up or clear-coated or anything. It just had that mylar on it, and you'll see where the mylar ends, like right here. You can see where the gray changes to a darker gray where there's no mylar. Um, but, yeah, and on a lot of these play fields, like the, the letters B A D C A T S, those will be gone. I have an extra play field right here. So, this is one that I bought later off of eBay. But you can see all of the cat's eyes are gone. <laughs> The words bad cats are gone. This one didn't have mylar, I don't think. It had a couple spots. But, um, you know, this this thing's beat. Um, it could probably be touched up and cleared. I was actually going to, um, you know, clean it up and put some lights behind it and hang it on the wall, but I just never got around to it. But you can see the difference. Um, between the two. Uh, this one didn't have mylar covering the lower area of the play field. And fortunately for me, mine did. Um, the artwork's really cool on this. I just love Python Angelo's artwork. He's He was a talented guy. Um, so here's the hole where the seafood wheel would go. This is where your um, linear target would go 
It's the trash can. The ball goes up here, drops here in the saucer, and then pops out. Um, and then you get your left and right drop target banks. This is uh, Ralphie's doghouse. Uh, and that hitting it in there is what gives you the seafood wheel. So the back glass and the back box on bad cats are, they have kind of an interesting story. Uh, there were at least two, and I think three different versions of this back glass. The one that I have is the production one, um, the one that you'll see most commonly. Um, I've seen, I think I've seen two other variations. One of them uh, there's a snake right here where Python Angelo's head is. There's a snake head. If you look on the flyer for Bad Cats, um, you'll see the version with the snake head, I believe. And then one of the other versions, now if you look at the garbage can back here on the ground, you just see litter um, on the ground surrounding it. But on, on one of the versions, there's a condom. And I'm sure that was Python Angelo's doing. Um, but obviously once, <laughs> I don't know the whole story behind that, but once the, uh, they didn't produce that version. Um, anyway, the, the woman in the garage on the, uh, on the back box, this is an, it, there's an animation. So the, the woman swats the cat with her broom and then the cat spins. And I know that it happens uh, when your ball goes into the out lane. Um, and it probably happens a couple other times during the game. But I really like the the back box on this game. There's a lot going on. You'll see the grill as you play. That grill lights up. Uh, the candle flickers in the window. And that, that woman swats the cat. I think uh, among all the games that I've owned, this is the, the coolest back box. Well, other than Bonsai Run, but... You know, as far as just a back box animation, I, I really like Bad Cats the best. And um, a while ago, I bought the panel insert off of eBay. You can kind of see how this works. There's so the woman, the woman and the cat are both on motors. Uh, oh, and by the way, you can, the woman has a tattoo on her butt. It's a butterfly. Uh, I don't know if you can see it there or not. But I'm sure that was also Python, uh, who did the artwork for the game. And this is all pretty easy to get to, but since I have it out, um, there there are the motors behind the woman and the, and the uh, cat. So there's kind of a lot going on with this back panel insert. Um, I believe that when you buy the reproduction plastic set for this game, it does not include the woman or the cat. Uh, so I don't know what you would do if yours were missing or broken. I guess they'd be pretty easy to make if you just print off the artwork and, uh, you know, put it on a piece of Lexan or something that you cut. So one of the things that's unique about Bad Cats is it's got this fish bonus target right here. Uh, the idea is you hit that orange disc with the cat on it, and the harder you hit it, the further that plunger goes back and the more points you're awarded. As far as I know, there's no other System 11 game that has a very target like that. I know that there were some EM Gottlieb games. I used to have a pro football that had two of those. Uh, but this one's different. This one uses an opto uh, on the assembly, and there's a disc with brakes in it. I'll show you that in a second. Um, you have to be a real contortionist to get that thing out of there. You can see you got to remove the ramp. Um, you got to remove some plastics above it. It's not fun. Um, when I got my game, mine didn't work, and I was a noob. I didn't know anything about pinball. Um, but I found a guy in Germany that had a new old stock assembly, and that's what's in my game. The, I replaced that, the games, I've had it for 20 years now. Um, so it's 20 years old, but uh, it was new 
when I put it in there in like around 2000. So this is the original fish bonus target that came with my game. Um, it's actually in really good shape. Um, I think that what was wrong with it is the, you can see the app two sitting right there. You can see on the, so here, let me try to demonstrate this with one hand. When I, as I push this back, you'll see this wheel spin and there's brakes in the wheel that pass through that opto. Opto. I keep, I'm not sure how it's pronounced. We'll go with opto. But you see how the, the wheel breaks the beam in the opto? Um, so, given that, for the most part, it, it appears to be in good shape, I, I think that this U-shaped opto is bad and needs to be replaced. But since mine in the game works, and since it was just such a pain to get out of there, um, I, I just haven't bothered to fix this one. Anyway, uh, some common things to go wrong with this, like, I have a few of these. I used to hoard parts off of eBay back in the day. Here's another assembly. Now, if you look at this one, this is pretty common. They, see how the, this one has what I think are just play field rubbers on it. This one, the, the rubber for some reason melts. It deteriorates and melts. And you see a big blotch down there where the melted rubber was. I cleaned it all off. But this one, in order to get it working, I would have to put, a, you know, two rubber rings like, like this onto there, and I would have to put one of these guys on there too. Uh, the spring's already, the spring is still there. I'm missing the, the little uh, compression clamp at the end too. Let me see, there's one that, on, on the good one that holds the spring in place. So, um, a lot of times, too, this foam is either missing or deteriorated. Uh, that's probably not really a big deal, but it'll cushion the, uh, the plastic when it hits, if you hit it hard enough. And here's another one. Now, this one has the original rubber on it. You can see how munged it is. Um, but, yeah, that's how it works. Uh, one other thing worth mentioning is these break. Now that when you see um, when you see kits on eBay or online for um, decals for bad cats, sometimes people think that this cat was on the drop target assemblies. It wasn't. Um, if you look, the original bad cats drop target assemblies had milk bottles on the right side and birds on the left and a lot of people think that that cat is the proper uh, drop target sticker they'll either replace the birds with the cat or they'll replace those milk bottles with the cat but the truth is um, that that cat that's the only place on this game that you'll see that you'll see it from the factory uh, so, something to be aware of if you have a bad cat and you're replacing those um, drop target stickers. So, another thing that's unique about bad cats uh, is this seafood wheel on the center of the table. Um, if you hit the ball into Ralphie's doghouse once, then this cat will start, the, the yellow cat there will start flashing. If you hit it a second time, then it'll spin that seafood wheel and you're awarded the prize based on whatever number uh, appears in the cat's net when the wheel stops. Um, I know that the motor for the seafood wheel is the same in a couple different games. Um, diner, as a matter of fact. So, seafood wheel on bad cats and then the clock on diner uses the same motor and I think the same board. Cyclone uses that motor. Um, and those are the only three that I know about. So these are a couple of seafood wheel assemblies that I've collected over the years. Um, I've read posts online where uh, the seafood wheel stops working 
um, that motor can go bad, I guess. Um, those can be found online. I probably Pinball Life and maybe Marco carries them. Um, underneath the wheel, it's kind of tough to see, but there is an opto under there, and you'll see on the bottom of the disc, there is a plastic interrupter that will break the beam on that opto. Um, I would imagine that this board can get cold solder joints too. Um, and one other thing, the way that that plastic disc connects to the motor, to the shaft on the motor, uh, I've only got one hand to work with here, but um, there is a set screw that you tighten. Uh, and sometimes that disc cracks. I read one case online where the disc cracked. Uh, and then the motor would spin, but the disc wasn't spinning. So those would be a couple things to look into. Th this isn't too hard to remove. Um, I think it's just the screws, the, the plug and then the screws uh, that hold the metal bracket onto the bottom of the play field. All right, we'll fire up the game. Bad Oh, the racket! 
pretty lucky one. Bad cat. See a curiosity spin on the outlane on ball three. You get uh, another random award off the CP wheel.